everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and that over there is Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. Hello, Nikki Kinzer. Happy day. Happy day. Uh, it is today. It is a very happy day. I'm I'm very excited with this. We've got uh, we're, we've got part three of the organizing steps uh, today in our little organizing yes. series. And uh, this is a big one because this is actually called organizing. <laughs> <laughs> it's the organizing this step. This is the actual organizing right. step of the organizing steps. And uh, so for those who have been uh, watching along thinking, hey, when do we actually start the organizing stuff? Well, this is your week. Uh, and so right. this, is, this is very exciting, very exciting time. Uh, before we get st- uh, started, head over to Take Control ADHD. You can get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to our mailing list and we'll send you an email each time a new episode is released. And of course, you can connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at Take Control ADHD. Uh, Okay, so we've got an opening question. Well, before that, though, I have an announcement. We do. This is an important one. Yes. So 2019 ADHD Women's Palooza is back. Oh, Linda. Yay. Linda. Linda Rogley. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. And uh, it is happening between February 25th and March 2nd. So you can actually uh, register and uh, be part of that now. And we will put the link in the show notes. Uh, But it's a great uh, online kind of conference if you haven't been to it. Um, 31 online experts, including Pete and I. Yes. in there. I get to come uh, to to the Women's Palooza. It's very strange. No. Well, there's actually lots of experts who are men who are talking to the women. So it's not all strange right. at all. All right. Well, <laughs> you I'm, fit I'm right well, in. It's very welcoming. Yes. And uh, so Pete and I are going to be talking about identifying workflows in your digital life, which was a great conversation. Uh, but there are lots of great topics. So it's a great event. I get great feedback from clients and listeners. Um, in fact, a lot of people will actually talk to me what they about what they learn. And uh, anyway, it stems from or it stems for some really great uh, conversations. So check that out. ADHD De- Women's Palooza. Definitely. And you'll you'll get there to the Palooza. And I think you have a, do you have a custom link? Do you have a special I link? Do. We want, so we'll yeah. put that in the show notes. Uh, but if you go to the ADHDpalooza.com, she now has two Paloozas. And I, I love the word Palooza so much. Uh, you can go to the Women's Palooza or the Parents Palooza, which is not going on right now, but you get to choose your Palooza. Choose your Palooza. I know. It's yeah, cool. It's, that a, makes gr- me it's happy. a great word. Palooza is great. Uh, so that's the women's Palooza, and it's coming. The the the. the did you say when they start dropping? Uh, February, yes, February twenty fifth and it's, March second. It's free if you sign up. It's free as long as you can make time to watch the events live, like during right. that week. And so you'll you'll pay up a little bit if you want transcripts, if you want recordings. There's a lot of great benefits if you pay up a little bit uh, and support the women's Palooza. There you go. Mm-hmm. All right. Now we need to talk about our opening question. Yes. What's the question? So this actually came um, to us a long time ago. And I feel (laughs) bad because usually we are really on top of answering people's questions. Uh, But this did come from a long time ago. I had it stacked away somewhere in my online files. And I thought, you know, I'm going to bring this back because it's actually a good question for the organizing um, series. And it's about decision making, but I just want to say that it doesn't have to be just for organizing because decision making in general can be very difficult. And um, and that's what the question is, is how do I make decisions in a way that I can feel confident? How do I make a decision without it being purely emotional? Oh, this is yeah, this is that's such a great. Well, it's such a great question. And that's it. That's the whole question. There's there isn't even a preamble for me to read with dramatic music. No. That's just it. No, it's just how do I do this? I, you know, I have a, just before you get into the answer, because I'm eager to hear your position on this. I, I find for me, you know, I, I did my year of fewer opinions two years ago. (laughs) You know, that was my year of fewer opinions. Well, I started feeling mired by how emotional I was getting about a lot of things, how emotional inside, like, and, and it was, I was plagued by this question of, um, you know, not even a question, this position where every question that came up was, well, I need to have a well-reasoned, well-thought-out opinion. And I would stop and my brain would just stop and focus on this opinion, whether it's politics on talk news or whether it's, you know, um, you know, what am I going to eat to dip for dinner tonight? You know, and I would feel incredibly deeply about this. And I had to ask you know, why on earth 
Do I feel more strongly about this thing, X, Y, Z, than anyone else, right? I was feeling so, I was getting myself so mired up in every choice that I had to make in the world that I had to actually have a constant sort of meditative approach to the world where I stopped every day and said, fewer opinions. I am going to practice feeling less strongly about this because it was it was I, I it was like the weight of the world was I put it on my shoulders. Yeah, that's interesting. I like that question. Why, why on earth do I feel more strongly about this than anyone else? And I think that's a really good um, question to kind of check in with yourself when you are really um, stuck, you know, on what to do, especially on those minor things like what to eat. And, yeah. Um, you know, there's just a lot of a lot of decisions that seem simple, but they're not. They feel much bigger than they are. So I think, you know, checking in with yourself to really, fig- you know, figure out if it really does matter to other people as much as it matters to you. Um, and of course, like with anything, it depends on what you're making a decision on. You know, um, I think that obviously the bigger decisions are you going to take a new job? Are you going to move? You know, those things are going to take time. Right. You're going to have to process them. Um, Hostess and talk to or people. little Debbie, Nikki. Hostess or little Debbie. Yeah. Right? Well, obviously people aren't <laughs> loving little Debbie. Yeah. Well, that's the truth. Sorry, because Debbie. Because of that. Well, I don't know. If, did we talk about that pre-show? Yeah, we did. Before we hit record? We yeah. did. We were talking so we were about talking the run. About we were talking about the the snow and the grocery aisles, and there was this picture on Facebook that had this grocery aisle that was completely empty, except for this one little far corner of the picture that was all little Debbie hostess cakes. Yeah. And I thought, that's just weird. Yeah. You know, that that was full, but everything else was everything empty. Else so was anyway, anyway. That, that's our pre-conversation that we have before <laughs> we come on air. Aren't you glad you know that now? That's right. Okay. <laughs> sweet, sweet pre-show. <laughs> yes. So uh, getting back to that, um, obviously, it, de- it does depend on the context of the of the decision. But, you know, I think taking your time, processing it, talking to somebody else about it can really make a difference because um, so many ADDers are verbal processors that once they say it out loud, they're like, oh, really, this isn't that big of a deal. Right. You know, I can go ahead and make this decision. Uh, But I also have to go back to limiting beliefs. Um, You know, if you already go into something feeling like you don't make good decisions or you're not confident that you're going to make good decisions, then that's what's going to follow. So I would also really look at how you're talking to yourself about how you make decisions. And, um, you know, confidence is something that you gain right from experience and by making more decisions you're going to feel more confident Mm -hmm. and um practice and you know i think that like you said it it can takes to just take a step back and is this really as important as as i'm spending the time and energy on it that's right and uh, you know i think that's uh, i I, the idea of just stopping and using the words and saying like giving it sound giving it sound use it putting your mouth and your voice and letting your voice actually uh, it, you know, hit your own ears. There's something about that to be that that makes it sound either more or less rational, right? And that'll, right, right. that'll tell you a lot, right? Flipping a coin and calling heads or tails, how you feel about the result of that can tell you a lot about the decision that you have to make about, you know, your sense of it. But for me, like being able to say out loud, um, you know, talk through the challenge out loud and and practice building the muscle of uh, this is not one I need to worry about. No opinion. Right. I need to not. I need to move on. Um, to to be able to do that without any of the sort of meta judgment is it, it takes a lot of work. It takes it takes like daily, minute by minute, hour by hour practice to to get good at that. It's it, it's okay to to feel like that's a hurdle because that's a hurdle. Yeah, it is so. absolutely. The ADHD podcast is brought to you by you. The reason we can do this show each week, year after year, since 2010. You got 2010. I was a a child in 2010. And it's all thanks to the support of you, our listeners, and your support at patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. Your direct support pays for hosting the show and equipment, uh, but it helps also to put food on our tables and pay the bills. If this show has ever touched you, we encourage you to 
uh, give us a shot over at patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. And I do want to shout out like we're about to hit our first tier of support. And what that means to you is that uh, we're going to start uh, doing transcripts as soon as we hit that first tier uh, of monthly support uh, on uh, on our Patreon page. Uh, you'll see we're going to start doing full transcripts for each episode, which I know is something that you know, it, it's hard to do. It's hard to do right. There are machine translation services that just don't cut the mustard for for ADA, uh, you know, accessibility issues. And, and so we want to do real solid human transcriptions. And there's a cost associated with that. And, and uh, uh, so to upgrade the show in that way, we're counting on you to help us out. If it's important to you to have transcripts, it's if, if it's important to you um, to, uh, you know, be able to go back and, and review transcripts after you've heard the show, if it's important to you to help support the hearing impaired community who also lives with ADHD and you want to support transcripts for them, this is a great way to pay it forward. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your support. Again, patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. The organizing series, Nikki Kinzer. This is week yes. three of the organizing podcast series. Uh, make sure that you listen to these episodes in order. You are catching three. That means there are two more episodes that you need to go back and listen to uh, to get yourself up to speed before you actually listen to this one. Nikki Kinzer, right. where would you like to start? The definition. What is organizing? What exactly? is organizing? <laughs> who, who even knows anymore? Who knows? Yes. All right. Well, I have a very simple um, definition, just like I have the definition of what it means to be organi organized, right? Um, organizing, this step is that you, this is where you decide where your things are going to go and how they're going to be placed. So after you've done your planning, after you've done your sorting and your purging, you're left with all of this stuff. Well, hopefully you're left with less stuff, but the stuff that brings you joy mm -hmm. and the stuff that you love. And now you have to put it back and, uh, and decide how that's going to work in your home. So clutter in general, if you just look at around and you, you see the clutter that is uh, around you, a lot of times it's it's uh, building up because you just haven't decided where it goes yet yeah. or where you did decide it was going to go is not convenient. Yeah. Um, so it kind of just stacks up. But like a lot of new items will become clutter, right? Because you'll bring new stuff in and mm -hmm. and um, it just sort of lays where, you know, lands wherever it wants to land. So we definitely want to pay attention to this type of clutter because this is when you um, – do want to do step three and decide where things are going to go and um, going into next week when we talk about maintenance maintenance will become much easier if you know that everything has a place right you know where to put things back right and uh, we've talked about this before where each space has to have a purpose and um, you know we want to review that purpose and look at our spaces and decide you know what what do I want here what uh, what items are important to me you know the, those and we're going to talk about some strategies here in just a second um, but that's really what organizing is is assigning those homes I think this is a, such a wonderful part of the process too because I uh, I personally get a, a deep sense of joy in assigning purpose to an empty, like a space, to a, a right. purged space, right? There's a shelf, uh -huh. there's nothing on the shelf, and I am revisiting what I use that space for, what I use the space on the walls for, what I use the space for my furniture. Like I I get such a, a sense of just sort of openness and joy from saying this is now going to serve this new purpose for me. And um, I, I, I live for that stuff. Yeah, well, it makes it, it makes it easier to live in your home. Truly. When you have that space, absolutely. Now I wanna talk a little bit about time frame because we know that in the sorting stage, that can be time consuming because it really depends on how much you have to, to go through. In the organizing stage, it really doesn't have to be that time consuming, especially depending on the approach that you chose in step two, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have chosen to take all of your stuff out and then you're putting it back in, that may be a little bit more time consuming because you, you have to, you know, 
I'll put everything back in. But for smaller areas, you may not have had to do that. You may have just, you know, cleared out a few things and now all you have to do is clean it up and reorganize it so you can see it and you're done. Right. right. I mean, so it doesn't have to be very time consuming. Um, bigger areas, you know, this may be a good time to take out the clothes once you've sorted and purged them and place them back into a closet. So you it I, I suppose what my point is and what I want people to walk away from is that it doesn't have to be um, it doesn't have to take you hours to do this. You know, right, it, right. It's, it's it's a simple process. Um, if you just remember that, just keep it simple. Right. And remember the definition of organization, of being organized, is finding what you need when you need it. And that really is the most important um, thing that you have to remember when you are putting your stuff back is how am I going to remember this? Mm -hmm. How am I going to find this when I need it? And um, so I have, you know, a few strategies that I want to share. Of course, before we get into that, I just want to remind everyone that less is more. <laughs> so, um, you know, the organizing step is going to be easier for you if you continue to purge. Uh, we don't just sort one time. We can keep sorting throughout this process. Uh, you may have a different opinion now on something than you than, than you had before. If you don't have enough space, like maybe you've sorted. I remember working at a person's home once and they had uh dish towels they had drawers for dish towels and they ended up having like they had three drawers like once we got done with all of the purging they still had three drawers and the goal was just to make it go into one because you really don't need that many dish you know dish towels uh -huh. uh, <laughs> so uh, we ended up having to sort and purge it again so that she could get down to one so you know I think it, there is some value in looking at the space that you have really available and um, continuing that sorting process and welcome the empty space. It's okay to keep things empty too. You know, we ended up, uh, my my wife ended up on a thing. She ended up on a, a drive. She ended up on a thing. It's a thing. She ended up on this drive <laughs> that I at first thought was cockamamie strategy. She came up with this thing. She said, she read somewhere and said, uh, um, you know, you should find one anchor space in each room and go make that crazy organized, crazy clean, whatever it is. And that will help you sort of multiply uh, your, you know, it will help you. It'll, that organization will multiply over the course of, uh, you know, of your life in that space. And so in our kitchen, she went through this day long, like soaked our kitchen sink in bleach. She scrubbed it. She soaked it. It is. It was pristine and shiny. It looked like absolutely brand new. And our sink is usually full of, you know, dishes and crap and stains right. and things. So she got rid of all of that. And I'm not kidding. Like, and that at the end, she she leaves a dish towel right by the sink. And after each major meal, we go through and we wash and dry the sink. And it takes about ten seconds. But that sink has helped us organize the entire space around the kitchen counter. And it's like it is. In fact, it's like magic. Like once we put the soap in order, the things that we needed that we actually thought, do we need this here? We go through that process. Magically, it has it, organization has multiplied. The bread box That's is now awesome. totally organized. The coffee stuff is now organized. It's spreading. It's spreading it's about spreading. the kitchen. <laughs> That's great. So I've never sort of, heard that before. I've heard of like the shiny sink from um, the fly lady. Yeah. There's oh, that maybe that's where it started. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's that is a great oh, story. I, I'm telling you, it is amazing. Once you have that sink, it everything else looks crappy. It looks disorganized yeah. and messy. And I you wanna, feel like, you yeah, this that. is a thing yeah. we're going to change. So it was a great strategy for us. And maybe it'll help others as you start looking at your most important spaces. All right. So yeah. where do you want to go That's from great. here? Well, I'm going to just talk about some um, a few simple tips, things that people have probably heard before, but I think it's always worth repeating, especially if you're working on getting your space organized now. This is yeah. a great time to review these things. We want to place items where we use them. I know that sounds well, duh, why would we not want to do that? Right. Um, but this is actually a good criteria of when you are organizing a space and you're putting stuff back, think about 
the top 10 items that you use in that space and put those things back first, because this is the stuff you're using on a daily basis. This is going to be the stuff that um, needs needs to have the prime real estate in your in your uh, cupboards and drawers because they're front and center. So you want them to be easy and convenient. So if you think about a kitchen, if you have the same pots and pans that you use every day, make sure that those are easy to get to. Make sure you can pull them out. Make sure you can put them back. So it's not such a pain. Um, and so that's just a kind of nice rule of thumb is what are the 10 items that I use in the space and where do I need to find them? And um, that's really good. I actually found this tip from, um, I think her name's Julie Morgan. She I don't know be, Julie Morgan. I think that's, I, I, you know, I would have to look, but um, she was sort of a big professional organizer guru, like, a few, you know, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. And um, anyway, she has a organizing book for teens. And this was one of her ideas for teenagers is what are the 10 top items that you want in your room? And I think you can really expand that to anything. So what is your take on uh, uh, leaving things out that you do use with great regularity? And I'm, I'm thinking again, we we're talking about the kitchen. I'm thinking about the kitchen, like leaving yeah. your top one or two pans clean on the stove, because those are the ones you always use. Do you always put your pans away? Do you organize at that level or do you do you tidy at that level? You know, do you consider I, those things clutter? I think it's a great question. And I think it's an individual question. If you don't care that the pans are up on top, then keep the pans up on top. I mean, I, I think that it's whatever your toleration is and what you're OK with. Um, there is no right or wrong. I personally would probably put the pans away, but I have a really easy way to do that. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't it doesn't take any more than just a second to do that. Um, however, you know, the toaster stays up on the the counter. Yeah. Our mixer stays up on the counter because it's such a big, you know, um, yeah. appliance. And um, so I think it really just depends. But yeah, if you're OK with it, then yeah, absolutely. Those are keep it up there. Those are easy ones for us uh, because. Uh, we don't have the most convenient like width and size of cabinets. Right. They, they just don't always work that well. But what we do, uh, you know, we, we leave out the appliances. The blender stays out because we use it all mm -hmm. the time. So the yep. coffee maker, obviously, I use the heck out of that. Uh, yeah. The um, we, we put away like the food saver. We have a food saver, you know, vacuum mm -hmm. sucker thing. But we do have an easy way to put that away. So we, we put mm -hmm. that one away. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I get that. I think the, the pots and pans, I, I get into this with my father in law because he shows up at our house and he's always trying to put the pots and pans away because he's a meticulous like cleaner i don't want to say he's a germaphobe but man he's brillo padding our stove and we tend to yeah. spray and wipe our stuff like we clean it we're not like you know right savages right. but we do clean uh, and he cleans in a different fashion right and, right and so we always kind of run into that so i wonder it's like is that a is that a clutter thing? This I think is that's your good. Home, you know, it's my home. It is. It's your home. Stay in your lane, and Dad. It, yeah. And it goes back to the whole reason why I named my online course what I named it. It's organizing your space your way. Yeah. You do things the way that are going to be, that, that are going to work for you. And it may not look like somebody else's, and that's okay. Right. Um, totally fine. And, you know, so going back to kind of placing items where we use them. Um, so obviously we want the most important things easy, but then the, those less used items like the food saver and uh, my husband really wanted an ice cream maker <laughs> for oh. Christmas. But I'll tell you, it's really good ice cream when he makes it. It's awesome. Uh, but that's not staying on our, you know. Yeah. Like, counter. are you making ice cream daily? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so we have a spot for that in our hall closet that it goes into. So, I mean, you know, I think it's just really being methodical about what you use and making those um, easy to get to. And the second tip I have is to utilize your space. So especially for small homes, small apartments, um, small kitchens, you know, whatever it is, right. look at your walls. That's like the biggest, um, really the biggest first place I would look at because you have space there. Think of shelves, right? I mean, if you have an empty wall, you can put shelves there, which yeah. all of a sudden expands, you know, how much space you have to put stuff. Now, this doesn't mean that you should keep everything, you know, right? keep right. what brings you joy, right? Um, but it, de it does definitely expand um, what, what you're able to uh, 
organize and hold. You know, um, that's really and, interesting, too, because when I uh, when I was um, looking to to straighten up, we, I had these guitar stands all over the floor, uh, you know, mm-hmm. because I have a couple of guitars and they're kind of they go back and forth between rooms. And uh, I had these these stand up floor stands to keep them up off the ground, not leaning against stuff. And so uh, but I would notice that those freestanding stands were like clutter magnets. Like I, it would, it became so much easier for me to stack boxes kind of near them because they're kind of out of the way. It became a, a, a thing behind which I could put other stuff. As soon as I started getting hooks, I put hooks on all the walls yes. in the major areas where I do music around the house. And suddenly that part of the, the clutter magnetism has disappeared. It, it was huge huge to start thinking about wall space hanger space shelf space huge yes and i love that you say the hangers or the like yeah like the hooks because i remember um when i was an organizer i was um organizing a teenager's room and the mom had said that one of the biggest things was that he left his his coats and his clothes always on the ground so and you wouldn't hang stuff back up and everything so we ended up putting hooks in the back of his closet and around his room and so all of a sudden you know he had somewhere to put these things that was really easy get backpacks off the the ground ground. yeah i mean that's huge Huge. yeah yeah that's definitely the what you want to think about is how can i utilize this space how can i make it work for me out of sight is out of mind and so this kind of goes back to your original question about you know can I have this out? Absolutely. I mean, if there are important things that you need to have out um, so that you don't forget, I think it's important to you can do that in a in somewhat of an organized fashion. But again, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. It doesn't always have to be contained in some little, you know, container either. Right. Um, furniture, a lot of furniture has dual purposes. You know, ottomans that can be blanket holders, ottomans that could be remote holders, you know, f- shoes, whatever. Um, oh, so especially if games. you're in a oh, board games. Goodness. Yeah. If you're in a little New York apartment, you know, you're going to have to really think about how you utilize your space. And there's a lot of um, dual purpose furniture out there. You want to get some inspiration. Start looking for uh, micro space, like small apartment organizing videos on YouTube just oh, right. for, for straight up, you know, structural, like architectural ideas for how to, right. to organize small spaces. I'm consistently blown away by how much space they can they're do. able to use. Yeah. 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 It's pretty cool. Um, The other tip I would have is to get your family involved. So if you live with other people in your home, ask their input, ask their questions uh, or ask them questions. What makes sense to them? What is easy for them to remember? Uh, You know, if you have children, you can teach them how to organize Um, as young as two years old. These kids can, you know, put toys in a bin. They Mm -hmm. can put toys in a basket. It's, you know, I think it's, it's something that it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not always looking for a clean house. It's just teaching them how to put things away. Um, And I think it's also being clear of what the expectations are of the space. So if you're going in as a family and saying, okay, we got to keep our house clean and somewhat organized. I mean, we live here. So again, we're not looking for perfection, but what what do we need to do? Do we need to do a daily cleanup? Do we do a weekly cleanup? Um, You know, who's going to be responsible for what? Who's going to take the garbage out? Whatever. Um, But the more invested your family and and your roommates are um, in the process, the greater buy-in you're going to have from everybody. Um, And, you know, there is no magic rule that's going to say, if you do this, your house will stay organized forever. Uh, Unfortunately, I don't have that power. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) uh, But it does definitely help if you get your family and uh, the people you live with involved. You know, we, we started a Saturday room check for all of us where we each check each other's rooms. And so Saturday morning, you've got to make sure your bed is made. Uh, You've got to make sure everything is picked up off the floor and that, uh, you know, if your laptop is out, that it's kind of plugged in on your desk, that it's kind of there, but but that generally the the room is in order and you have to dust one piece of furniture. So we got each of our kids a dusting rag and it's in their room (laughs) and they just have to, whether it's the headboard on their bed or their bedside table or something gets dusted every Saturday morning. And that has been really fun. And they are equally energized about checking our room off as we are about oh, checking right. theirs. It's a it's a fun way to do do the business of keeping yeah. keeping these precious spaces straight. 
Right, right. That's a great idea. Um, okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is organizing products. Um, we <laughs> talked about this in one of the shows. I can't remember if it was the first one or the second week, but mm-hmm. you know how they can become clutter magnets very quickly. You go and uh, buy all these organizing products thinking that they are going to be the ones that are going to get you organized, and then they end up with just a bunch of stuff. Um, so I definitely recommend that we don't purchase anything um, unless you know for sure that you really do need the product. Um, invest in a label maker. We talked about that too in one of the weeks mm-hmm. just to keep track of what goes into that product. It's just one more step to kind of ensure that it doesn't become a clutter magnet. I'm a big color coder. I mean, I can tell you it is so much easier to go into my attic and see the green bins and know that that's for Christmas and the orange ones are for fall. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just makes it so much easier. Um, so color coding can be a great thing. Um, also measure measure your space. So if you are looking for a particular uh container or bin to go somewhere, um, definitely measure it. And um, again, out of sight is out of mind. So some of the best products that you can get would be clear ones. And you also have it labeled. Mm -hmm. So you have it labeled and you can see what's inside is um, definitely the way to go. That is for me a huge, huge ADHD trick, right? The, The labels and colors together, especially the attic, I, you know, that scene in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation where Clark goes up to the attic and ends up watching old movies and finding presents like Mother's Day presents from 30 years ago. Uh, (laughs) That's totally me in the attic. And if I go up there and I look at, at this assortment of bins and a, they're not clear, right? Because we also have, you know, assorted colored bins. They're not quite as, as you know, at, attentive to seasonal colors as yours are, which is aspirational right. thinking right there. I need to, yes. to make a move on that. <laughs> uh, but if I go up there and I don't see the labels clearly, I'll start looking through everything. And then the okay. ADHD takes over because I haven't been up in this space. There's an exhilarating dopamine push that, that hits me. And I'm thinking, well, as long as I'm here, I'll just clean out a few of these little things. So my intentions are right. pure, but I am off purpose. And that's that can be just a disaster. So, you know, colors, labels in particular, that is that's huge, huge for the ADHD mm-hmm. trip. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So that's what I have about step three with organizing your space. Next week, we're going to talk about maintaining the space. What's the last organizing product you bought? Do you remember? Oh, that is such a good question. It's been a long time yeah. since I've bought one. I think that's um, that's kind of the point of the question. Like I I feel like, you know, we we sometimes sounds like we take kind of a hard line against organizing products, but that's uh, like how many organizing products do you really need in your in your life? That's a good tricky question because I really can't remember the last time I went and bought an organizing bin. I'm just going to say that that should set the bar pretty high if yeah. if the organizing ADHD coach does not support I'm not the going organizing out and buying products. any of that. Thing. Yeah. I don't absolutely. I don't remember mine either. I did the last time I made a massive organizing products purchase was when we redid all our hangers. Oh Which that, makes sense. That was so yeah. such a fantastic you know, change. That's probably the last thing I've done was the was the hangers, the velvet hangers when yeah. I switched to that for the kids because they were out they they outgrew yeah. the little child hangers. And yep. yeah, I think that's probably the last time I did too. Huge. All right. Yeah. So next big difference. next time is maintaining and uh, I can't wait. That's always fun. And that'll that'll wrap up our big series. No, it won't. We'll have even no. maybe one, maybe two more in our series. You never know. That's right. You never know. You got to keep listening. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening to this show. We sure appreciate your time and your attention. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next time right here on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Mm-hmm.